Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, trust that you're doing well and you had a good uh, weekend as well. So let's pray and uh, let's get into this morning's class. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for adding another week into our lives, O oh God, and thank you for the privilege of uh, studying your word. Help us, God, to um, have depths uh, of understanding and above all, O oh God, to be established uh, in the work, O oh God, that you're calling us to do. Father, we ask for your wisdom and uh, uh, your presence, Lord, as we continue to look deeper into the book of Acts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, I hope the people in class can hear me fine. Loud enough? Okay. So let's uh, continue. We were in Acts chapter 2 and we saw the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Um, we saw how they were waiting on the Lord and uh, yet there was a suddenly. And in this case, the suddenly came when they were actually expecting it. It's just that they didn't know that in that moment it's going to happen. And we saw how powerfully the Holy Spirit was poured out on them, uh, where they were filled with the Spirit, and they all started speaking in unknown tongues. Um, now, one more interesting fact that we are going to look at is when Peter stands up and he starts to describe what is happening. Um, and you know, he says, this is that, referring to the prophecy of Joel. So let's quickly um, go to Acts chapter 2. Give me a moment, please. Let's look at this. Okay, verse 16, I think so. Okay, yeah. Yeah, verse 16, Acts chapter 2 and verse 16. Uh, when... Peter starts to explain what was going on. He starts by saying, but this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And notice what the prophet Joel has said. He said that God will pour out his spirit on all flesh and the people will prophesy. They will have visions. They will have dreams. Now, just tell me what is happening in the upper room with people being filled with the Holy Spirit, they are all speaking in tongues. But Peter is saying, this is what was spoken by the prophet. Is it correct? Like, because Joel said, prophecy, dreams, visions. What is happening? Tongues. How can this be that? Yeah. He said, I will pour out my spirit, but Peter is saying what you're seeing, what was spoken by the prophet Joel, right? But prophet Joel said manifestation should be prophecy, dreams and visions. What is the manifestation here? Tongues. Then how, how can Peter say spirit is being poured out? Huh? All gift of the Holy Spirit, correct. But see, even in the case of Peter, for the first time he's experiencing baptism, how did he recognize? People are not prophesying, right? Then how? Did you all get my question? Yeah.
any any views or comments even online prophet joel spoke but he spoke about prophecy dreams visions here manifestation is tongues how did peter recognize that it's the same thing word of wisdom yeah could be could be we could even say discernment right we could even say discernment so by the holy spirit he's recognizing that this is the outpouring of the spirit even though the manifestation is different so what is the point for us our point is that when the spirit of god is poured out the way he works can be very different each time but we need to be in tune with the holy spirit to recognize we may expect you know something it will look like this it will manifest like this but the manifestation can be uh yeah something we never expected but just because it's different from what we have experienced we cannot say that god is not at work or the spirit is not poured out okay so openness holy spirit every time we pray holy spirit you come or holy spirit be poured out how he manifests is up to him any gift right any um um uh, phenomenon anything can happen but we recognize that it is the holy spirit at work and holy spirit is being poured out uh jackin and uh, prince also are sharing their views jackin says peter knew that supernatural is from god so he was actually reminded of the prophecy of joel and spoke in the authority of the holy spirit okay that's true uh, but i also explained myself saying the manifestation was different that's why i was asking how did he recognize uh, but yeah thanks uh, jackin for that prince is saying maybe they were prophesying in tongues where other people can understand okay i'm not sure about that prince because it quite clearly says that uh, they were speaking in tongues uh, but the tongues was human languages and people could hear them praising and magnifying god so was it prophecy answer is no it was not prophecy it was just tongues okay so um, anyway so that was just an extra thing for us to remember and what did we also say we said that uh, people when they observed the outpouring of the holy spirit there were two reactions one is a positive reaction people were uh, amazed and they marveled but the second reaction was more of mocking what did they say yeah these people must be drunk but uh, peter said it is like morning hours how can they be drunk right and then he starts to preach about jesus so we stopped when we said that he spoke the name of jesus and said jesus of nazareth and then he says god attested he was attested by god through miracles wonders and signs so verse 22 that's a lesson for us also you see our ministry must be marked by the supernatural when we studied keys to supernatural ministry we asked the question why is it important why is it necessary look at this peter says jesus of nazareth attested by god meaning attested is what like when you have a letter it is worth something but when you seal the letter with the institution seal it's worth a lot because it has the backing of an institution similarly what he's saying is jesus of nazareth was doing his ministry god backed up his ministry so today you and i we are doing ministry we want god to back up our ministry whether somebody recommends us or not we want god's recommendation so what is one of the recommendations like that miracles signs wonders the supernatural a transformed life right so when people 
are coming up with these testimonies it's showing that god is at work and that was the way jesus did his ministry so uh, god attested jesus through miracles wonders and signs and then you know he goes on to preach um his first sermon we can see the themes in his first sermon what are all the um points that he covered he talks about of course first he talks about uh, the outpouring of the spirit joel's prophecy second he talks about jesus how mighty the ministry of jesus was and he refers to the fact that jesus lived jesus died jesus rose from the dead and uh, he also covers um, references from the old testament scriptures so that he can prove that the lord jesus is the messiah so that also he points out and finally he calls people to repentance now let's uh, just look at the scriptures here you see verse 34 okay verse 34 of chapter 2 he says for david did not ascend into the heavens but he says himself the lord said to my lord sit at my right hand till i make your enemies your footstool so uh, he's talking about the promise which god gave david uh, and the fact that you know david is no longer there he's dead and gone so these promises were actually spoken to the son of god jesus okay so uh, the lord said to my lord this is david speaking even david is uh, giving reference to jesus as deity the lord is who the father said to my lord david is calling jesus lord okay so he is just trying to explain from the old testament that jesus is the messiah uh, and they always used to do this and especially when there is a jewish audience they would bring up scriptures and share uh, from the scriptures that jesus is the messiah otherwise the people will not believe it now if we just go a little bit up in the in the text here uh, he still was talking about david and he said look uh, god promised david that somebody will always be on his throne okay uh, but where is david now david is dead and gone so what were those scriptures who were those scriptures referring to you know somebody who will live on somebody who will continue to be on the throne it's jesus so that way he's trying to tell the jewish people that it's not even their patriarch so for the jews they uh, respected certain men and women from um, old testament times like um, moses david abraham these were all mighty men of god so they looked up to them so what peter is trying to do now is through one of those patriarchs he's referring to david who is very well respected and he's saying even david said that you know uh, uh, one of the descendants will live on but david is gone who was he talking about he was talking about jesus so prophecies and words that were pointing to christ is what peter is trying to bring out in the sermon now after he has spoken about jesus we saw verse 34 where he says that god will make the enemies a footstool whose footstool of jesus okay or the victory of jesus from verse 36 after preaching about christ he says therefore 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 means what because of all this therefore in continuation what does he say verse 36 let all the house of israel know assuredly that god has made this jesus whom you crucified both lord and christ do you remember i said earlier that it's been roughly two and a half months after the crucifixion of jesus 
So it is incredible courage on the part of Peter to preach about Jesus. And <coughs> does it sound like there's any confusion about Jesus being the Messiah in the sermon? Not at all. It's very direct. Right? It's very direct. So it's a very um, bold and direct message. Okay. <coughs> and this message, how did Peter preach? He prepared. How many hours he prepared for the sermon? Nothing. He just spoke by the Holy Spirit. Now, what is the reaction that we expect from the people? The setting is understood. People still know Jesus who was recently crucified. There's a lot of chaos with, uh, associated with that name. How do you think the people are expected to respond? Anger? All right. Okay, that's an expectation. Any other way? Repentance? Okay, for some repentance, okay. Yeah, it could be a combination of these two reactions. Now listen to this, verse 37, okay? It says, now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Now you and I, when we go and preach about Christ, you know, our confession of who is this Jesus? How has he transformed my life? This is the reaction we look for. That people will be touched. Cut to the heart is deeply touched, deeply impacted. To the point where they are asking the preacher, you tell us now what to do. If Jesus is the Christ, what is the next step? Okay. So it's amazing how the Holy Spirit worked through Peter. He stood up and he preached to 3,000 people. Their reaction was, Peter, we believe. What is the next step? They were cut to the heart. Right? Uh, we can only picture this. Thousands of people, they are listening to Peter. Thousands of people are responding. It's just one day. All this is happening. So it's literally like, you know, how you and I expect a revival to be. It's, it's a scene like that. And it's happening. Did Peter expect for them to uh, accept Christ so quickly? I don't know. But it happened. They were cut to the heart. And they come and they ask Peter, you know, tell us, what shall we do? We believe in this Jesus. Then Peter gives them the directions. He says, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So what does he say? Three things. Repent. This is the message even we are taking when we preach Christ. Okay. Jesus is the Messiah. Then what? What should the people do? Repent. Repent of your sins. Then what should they do? Be baptized in water. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And then what they, what should they expect? They should wait for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So when we say wait, in the uh, first chapter of Acts, they waited for many days. Today, we don't have to wait like that. You just have to desire. Even if someone is born again a moment ago, right now they can be baptized in the Holy Spirit. It's okay. That's how it works. Right? So there is no need to make people wait for days and months for them to receive baptism in the Holy Spirit. All right. So um, uh, that's exactly what happened. And 
in verse 39 this is also a very powerful uh, verse where it says this for the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off as many as the lord our god will call so today when you and i we minister the baptism in the holy spirit we can stand on the scripture what does the scripture say verse 39 it says the promise of the baptism in the holy spirit for whom is it for your children and to all who are afar off which means you and i we are afar off we are not uh, you know the immediate generations of the people who heard peter's sermon we are afar off and today we are praying for our friends our family members our church people and other believers they're all afar off but is the promise valid for those people yes based on verse 39 the promise is for you your children and all those who are afar off so all of us and all whom we minister to and it says and as many as the lord our god will call so every believer every believer is called every believer can be baptized in the holy spirit some people ask the question is the baptism in the holy spirit for everyone answer yes all believers all believers right so boldly we can minister we don't have to um, worry about it so this is what we call as the birth of the early church on the day of pentecost the festival of pentecost the holy spirit was poured out and peter preached because there were many people listening they responded right and uh, uh, suddenly from 120 people how many people were there 120 people let's see how many people joined the church from verse 40 onwards as we read uh, verse 41 says they gladly received his word were baptized and that day about 3000 souls were added to them we all dream of days like this right as far as the church is concerned we have a few first time visitors we are so happy imagine that day 3000 people suddenly like what what are you going to do How, where are they going to meet all the logistics but god did a mighty miracle in one day can, can 3000 people join a congregation they can it happened on the day of pentecost they joined the church now we will see how this church grew so this is the birth of the early church in jerusalem on that day and then the church starts to grow from here till chapter 7 we are going to study uh, about all the occurrences or rather the key occurrences in the church of jerusalem this is the church of jerusalem today what is the congregation number 3120 <laughs> okay 3120 so till chapter 7 we'll see how this church is growing how this church is thriving verse 42 what were some of the practices of the church now there is a church what are they doing verse 42 says continued steadfastly in apostles doctrine two fellowship Three, in the breaking of bread. Four, in prayers. Four things: the part of the community life, church life. What's happening in this church? They are taking time in God's word. What is the apostles' doctrine? What do you think is the apostles' doctrine? What Jesus? Yeah. it's a gospel gospel is the truth about jesus one yes what else is there to teach the people these new people yes what jesus taught right okay so the 
apostles now who are these apostles remember in the earlier chapter 12 of them matthias has joined the group now there are 12 of these apostles what are they teaching that's the question what are they teaching we understood we already understood that peter is teaching about jesus whatever he is preaching is pointing to jesus that's number 1 so the gospel who is christ who is jesus he is the christ about jesus secondly we know that they were knowledgeable about the old testament and even jesus was with them so these are all jewish men they were talking from the old testament okay so scriptures from the old testament so you could say that um, the jewish scriptures up to whatever jesus believed the disciples also believed so they were talking about that and how um, you know jesus has fulfilled it how it is applicable uh, right now in our lives as believers in jesus christ that is the second thing third the teachings of jesus you remember we said jesus taught about the kingdom of god so there are many teachings of jesus which needed to be passed on so what does this verse 42 tell us many of us here we are all uh, uh, serving already and we are going to go as pastors so how do we develop the church the congregation one is the preaching and teaching of god's word so see how the apostles are careful about the teaching correct teaching right teaching establish people in the truth of whatever jesus has taught them they are teaching same way we have a church we have people come to the lord we must equip them in the word they must be strong in the word they should know about the gospel about the doctrine you know these are basics basics and also foundations so the apostles are careful to teach the people okay that was one thing we also said fellowship fellowship means uh, now they are starting to come together often they're spending time with each other just how those 120 were together now these 3000 also have to come as a community and uh, there's communion and prayer so that's also being done when the church was coming together like this growing like this uh, you know god really blessed their fellowship so we see here verse 43 this is the effect on the people around fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles so we could look at this as uh, you know people were walking uh, devoted to god and also others were observing how this church community was growing and god was again uh, attesting or he was um, confirming that he was working in the community through signs and wonders and not only this verse 44 and 45 it shows us that this was a very generous community so what did they do they even sold their possessions and they gave to others can you imagine they wanted to give and if they did not have something to give they even sold their things and they gave so it was a generous community why did they do this why did they need to give and you know even sell and give any idea no okay do you recall that we mentioned people had come from uh, different places to jerusalem on that day when peter preached the message and they accepted christ it is possible that many people stayed back in Jerusalem, but their hometown is different. So now they have to start living their lives in Jerusalem because they want to be part of the church community. They, in that situation, they would not have had like money or things. 
and there was a need to give to all these new groups of people and help them out that's when the church showed a uh, big or great generosity yeah any question yeah uh, so regarding that uh, doctrine apostles i heard like there are five uh, so like only, we can consider like this five separate things or uh, or um, only one thing actually okay. what jesus taught only uh, i'm not able to recollect what are they yeah he's starting with the repentance mm. repentance uh, water baptism then holy spirit baptism it's going like that yeah so we need to put it like in five different things or five or seven i'm not remembering yeah so, yeah yeah uh, mm. like okay. that yeah okay good question the apostles doctrines um you know francis is asking whether we must put some five things in it five topics uh i'll try to go there Uh, so see um francis in the book of hebrews hebrews chapter 6 there there is a reference to some key subjects where um okay, let me read it out yeah so the writer says uh, not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works faith towards god doctrine of baptisms laying on of hands resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment there are six subjects so as if when the writer of the hebrews is talking about this it's as if he is giving a a uh, list of topics which are basic so some people go by this list and say we must at least teach this to our people okay however when we look at uh, all the like book of acts teachings and the epistles like paul and other apostles wrote no they are talking about more than this so uh, point is we must not limit ourselves just to that five everything which the apostles spoke about we can talk about all that and teach about all that yeah all right so uh, right now we spoke about the community how it was a giving community reason is because many people did not have they came from other cities and that's why they came now is it a good thing to keep giving like this like for example somebody in the church does not have and i i sell what i have and i show extreme generosity Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. No problem. Please uh, go. Ahead. So I think uh, it is uh, especially in that uh, period and scenario they were uh, uh, led by the spirit as a church because church is forming uh, new and uh, uh, everybody is filled by the spirit. Um, read. I mean, recent times I don't know if somebody sells their things and <laughs> gives to others, but yeah, people are generous and they really help people in the church. but yeah. having to that extreme okay okay sure uh, correct ravli uh, thank you for um, sharing that see in that context as ravli pointed out there was a need so people went to the extreme where they sold and they gave uh, but the same apostles like if you take the writings of paul to the thessalonians he writes in a very um, strict way like first thessalonians 4:11 he says to work with your hands one should work with their hands like you should not depend on anybody else you know he speaks like that later so we must we must look at the context and then um, you know sort of prescribe something uh, once people had what they needed 
the community did not always continue to do this because what will happen is uh you know some people may take advantage of other people right so that is why later on when the situation was better the same uh, you know like the apostles the church leaders instructed people to work hard in fact if you look at the life of paul he worked hard for himself he he was a tent maker people were willing to support him still he was a very responsible man so the same bible talks about great generosity and being responsible for oneself so there is a balance by taking this if let's say people preach and they tell the congregation no you must give you must give you know even to the extent you sell what you have and give because in the bible it says but look at the context if we are using this to make people give right uh that's not the whole thing because the same bible also talks about being responsible so those who don't have they must also learn to work work hard you know and uh, take care of themselves so there is a balance anyway so it's a wonderful community i can only uh, like it would be awesome right to actually experience what was going on in the church at that time so they these people they were in love with jesus they were worshiping him they were learning the word um and uh, you know in prayer and they were also kind to one another so it was a very uh, loving community and uh, verse 46 says continuing daily with one accord in the temple so that means prayer meetings or worship time was every day imagine if we had to go to church every day right but they were passionate they were going every day they were so uh, like full of the spirit and full of fire at at that point every day they went and it also says breaking bread from house to house as if going to church every day was not enough they are having life group also every day every other day <laughs> okay so this community is on fire it's awesome like how are they doing it but they were enjoying enjoying what god was doing in there it's so uh you know it, it was literally like uh some god was doing a special work among them right uh, and they were fellowshipping with one another they were praising god and all of this also was happening when the world outside or the people around had favor they had favor with the church community right uh, so verse 47 i'll just read it out it says praising god and having favor with all the people that means in that city people are respecting the church outside people are also respecting the church and the lord added to the church daily those who were being saved so did we stop with 3000 people no every day people are being added to the church the church is growing that's the uh, way the early church began right and a very very beautiful picture of uh, what is happening so any thoughts um, you know as you speak of a church like this is there uh, anything coming to our minds Is it possible for all of us to meet daily? Yeah. So, see again, no, taking this image and then imposing it on the present uh, society may not work because our lifestyles are different, and you know uh, the way our lives are in the cities. It's not easy to travel and to uh, meet with one another, and also. there is a different rhythm but as long as the lord is at work and you know we see all these features of being in love with god and uh, loving one another as a community it's fine we cannot impose exactly what happened here into our communities okay okay
what is it about the church so far that is uh, something you like or something that you're impressed by okay uh, jackin is saying literally it would have been heaven on earth experience day day on day month on month living in the presence of god continually and consistently yeah i'm sure it would have been really amazing yes even they were they were jews but hearing the truth with the god's doing so many people are open to the truth yeah because they were jews from like generation to generations and suddenly this truth been changing it so i feel it's it's only god can do it. yeah only god can do god was at work mm. yeah so we can also believe god for when we preach people will turn and the church will grow and that it will be a strong church um it will be a powerful church right so it gives us a lot of hope to see churches like this thrive in our communities all right so let's uh, stop at this point we'll pick up with acts chapter 3 in the next class um we can pray and close for now okay prince is saying they were in unity without any envy or jealousy yeah true so would uh, one of you please lead in prayer father god we thank you lord we thank you for this time you have given us lord lord help us lord to understand your word and live according to that lord we submit each one of us under your loving hands in jesus name we pray amen amen uh, thank you and i'll meet you on friday thank you bye